Sorry, how are you? My hair is really driving me nuts tonight, so if I seem to be playing with it, I apologize. I wanted to talk to you tonight about soul wounds and how they can create almost like portals in our spirit, in our soul, and that allows us to fall under attack or maybe even fall into a contract with a negative entity without even realizing it. How would you do that? Well, I'm going to explain a little bit, and I don't want to make this a super, super long video, but it's really important stuff to know. So tr there are different ways that we can come into contact. See, for a negative entity to have any kind of power over you, and if you are filled with the Holy Ghost, you can't be possessed. I know there are some people that think you can. You can't. However, you will be attacked, no doubt about it. Um, but sometimes you can be oppressed and sometimes, not always, not every time that you're, you find yourself under attack, but sometimes what happens to us is our soul wounds are so deep and depending on what has happened to us, we may not even be aware of it. Our, and those wounds actually open, like I said, portals, almost like little doorways within our soul that we're not aware of. So on a conscious level, we may be praying, we may be, you know, following the Lord, doing everything that we should do, raising our vibration every day, reading our Bible, memorizing scripture, all of those things, and still find the spirit of suicide, the spirit of oppression, the spirit of um, anxiety, you know, all these different things. And you're thinking, what the hell? You know, or maybe you're having night terrors, or maybe you're experiencing sleep paralysis, any of those things. Now, we know that trauma in our lives can make us the people that we are, um, can cause emotional blocks. We go to therapy, we take care of them. But like I've talked about before, you can go to therapy and you can think that you're okay with the different things that have happened in your life. And only to realize that you keep experiencing the same kinds of experiences or people or events that bring back to you those old soul wounds. For instance, you have um, abandonment as a soul wound. So you think you're doing fine, you've gone through therapy, you've dealt with all of the issues that you know of that brought this about and made this a part of who you are. Good job. That's great. I'm not saying that that's not good. We need to work on those things on a conscious level. But say you've done that and then, you know, life can be going along fine and then you hit a couple blocks because everything's circular. So you hit a couple blocks where you, those same wounds are reopened again and you're like, wait a minute, I thought I dealt with this. But you find yourself meeting people that abandon you all over again. So that sense of abandonment, that sense of unworthiness, if unworthiness is one of them, sometimes they go together hand in hand quite a bit. Um, so you meet people that make you feel this big. You have different circumstances where out of your control that make you feel unworthy. And it's circular, so it keeps coming around. And I have something, I have a video here, I'll look it up if, if, and I'll try to put it in the um, description, the energy bath one, where we can cleanse ourselves of these soul wounds. But what happens is the scar tissue is still there. So how, how does that open portals and, and create contracts with the negative? And I'll tell you one way it does. Okay, so there's two ways that we can have contracts with the negative without knowing it. And one is living in willful, willful sin. And a lot of times what happens is it is like a catch-22 because you could have this trauma and the trauma opens this portal and then you have a contract with this principality without knowing it, which leads you in this way of thinking that you're, it's in your head so much that you actually think it's a part of you and you start going down this wrong road and then you end up going down this road of sin. And you know, I'm not trying to sound all preachy or anything, but you can look back on it and go, wow, what was I thinking? I'm not that type of person. Say, for instance, having an affair with a married man or um, uh, cheating on your taxes or something and you go, whoa, that's not me. Why did I do that? But at the time, these negative entities made it seem like 
it was the right thing to do. Like for the married man thing. Oh, wait a minute. But he's not with the right person or um, we're soulmates or we're, you know, we have this soul connection. We're supposed to be together. It was just, you know, all of these things can come into play. And you know what? If that's true, if you are soulmates, if you're supposed to be together, his marriage is going to dissolve before you go that way, right? So, and I'm not going to get into that whole thing. I, You know, I'm not here to judge you or me or anybody. I'm just saying how things happen, okay, with the spiritual realm. And they will trick you into believing that you are okay, that this is fine, that this is exactly how it's supposed to be. Okay, so it could be that. It could be willful sin. So if you find yourself in a situation like that, just rethink it. Just sit down and go, okay, what is really going on here? Pray for discernment and, you know, reach out to somebody that you can trust, somebody that is like-minded, somebody that stands strong in their faith, okay? And somebody that's not going to sit there and judge you because none of us need to be judged, okay? We don't need to be, oh, you're wrong. We need to be communicated with like a human being with compassion and you know, but when somebody tells you the truth, be open to listening to them. Okay. That's why we have each other. That's why we lean on each other. Okay. Don't, don't get all defensive, you know, but you know what I find is people get defensive when you're critical of them. So don't be sitting there criticizing and judging them. Talk to them from a place of love. Okay, so I just got kind of off track and my hair is really bugging me right now. So I apologize for that. Um, okay, so what am I talking about? How do these souls, I still haven't said it, right? Okay, experience some kind of trauma, rape, um, of child abuse. Maybe your parents just yelled a lot. See, each of us are different. So something that may be no big deal to me, maybe a really big deal to you or vice versa. Um, I know I'll just speak from my heart, from my own personal experience. Cause I've had a lot of instances where it's as if I'm pulled away from my body and I don't know if I'm out of the ordinary or if this happens to everybody. I know it does happen to everybody. Some people to a degree where they actually separate <clears throat> and some people not so much to that degree. Now, if somebody actually separates, that's going to turn into multiple personality disorder. I'm not talking about that extreme, although it could happen. So in my own life, as an infant, and I don't remember being an infant, but I remember being a very young child. And remember, I told you that I had the voices and I had all of that. So there was a part of me that stepped forward in those moments and took over and took on the voices and, and took care of that. I also grew up in a very, very abusive household. I was sexually abused as an infant all the way down, you know, as a young child. I don't remember being an infant, but I do remember being a small child. And I remember the breath. I remember the weight. I remember the sick feeling. I remember the pain. And I also remember a point where I wasn't there anymore. It was as if I was looking at myself. Now I can't, I don't have vivid memories of this because I was so young. But then it happened again to me one time when I, I don't know how old I was, somewhere between eight and 10. And I had this new bicycle, I'll never forget it. It was this orange bicycle and it, it was big. Um, it was not a 10 speed. I can't remember what it was, but it was way too big for me. I shouldn't have been riding it. And I, I was a kind of klutzy kid. I was certainly not an athlete. <laughs> you know, I wasn't. I was this little tiny klutzy kid. And um, the boy next door, John, Jean was actually his name, but my sister and I called him John because his parents were French and they'd say Jean and we would call him John. But his name was actually Gene. But anyway, I had kind of a crush on him. And we were going to go. He used to ride his bike down to downtown. And I wanted to go with him. And I never got to go because I didn't have a bike. So I got my bike now and I was able to go. So we're driving. And on the way there, there was a road with a, a hill. And the hill went down. And there was a Dunkin' Donuts on the left and then it went into what we call granite square no longer there in manchester but at the time it was 
there was like a Dunkin's on across the street. There was a gas station. There was a bunch of stores, like a little mini mall in here. I can't remember. It was some kind of store or something on the other side. And you have to go down that hill and then you're in this busy, really busy intersection um, called Granite Square. And when, as we were going down the hill, he was flying, John was flying and I was trying to keep up with him. And we got to the hill now, keep in mind how klutzy I was as a kid. And I used to be terrified of heights and speed. I still am terrified of, of heights. Um, so we started to go down the hill and I started to panic. And I couldn't even talk. I mean, I didn't want to yell to him. I was embarrassed, but I started to panic. And brand new bike. I think this was the first time I ever really rode it. And um, I hit the front brakes instead of the rear brakes. So as you can imagine, I went head over heel and I flipped the bike uh, a couple times. I remember seeing the Dunkin' Donuts sign. And that is, I don't know how high up. But, you know, the Duncan sign that goes up. I remember passing that with the bike. And I didn't let go of the bike. At some point, I must have. I remember flipping a couple times and I came down. And I hit the cement. Now, I recall hearing my head hit the cement. I heard it. I didn't feel it. I heard it. At that point, I'm looking at my body. I am not in my body I'm looking at my body it was as if somewhere up in the air I jumped out I recall watching people from inside Dunkin Donuts John turned around he came back on his bike and I recall him standing over me and it was as if I could see it from both angles I could see it from the angle I was laying down at and I could see it from above at the same time as weird as that sounds and my eyes were closed, but I could see. And some people, probably about five or six people came out of Dunkin' Donuts. And I was right there on the street, kind of in the parking lot, on the street, halfway in and out. My bike was right next to me. John was standing over me and he was crying. And um, I recall a man came up and he took my pulse. And then there was a woman and the man and John standing over me. And then people in the background and the woman said, she's not breathing. And the man said, I can't find a pulse. And I remember the woman looking at me and saying, is she dead? Oh my God, I think she's dead. And I remember saying, no, I'm not. I'm fine. I'm not dead. What are you talking about? But from their point of view, I guess they weren't getting a pulse. And then I remember nothing. It like blacks out. And then um, the ambulance was called and everything. And I do recall the EMTs coming. They got a pulse. But even when they got the pulse, I was still seeing both. Um, I never went anywhere. I never crossed over. I never, I stayed right there with my body. So I don't think I actually died. I, I think that the pulse was probably just so weak. Anyway, so that happened. Um... So between, and then when I got a little older, I was brutally raped. Uh, I almost died. I almost bled to death because he cut me quite a bit and I bled, I bled out quite a bit and I got away and I remember vaguely it's in and out because it was so traumatic. And I don't know if I left my body at that point or if it was just the loss of blood, but I remember crawling out onto the street, kind of trying to run, but ending up falling. And um, next thing I know, there was a man in a pickup truck who I still believe was not even a man. I believe it was an angel because I never could find this guy again um, that took me to the hospital. And um, luckily, obviously, here I am. So it saved my life. But again, at that point, getting into the truck, I'm seeing the same thing. I'm seeing from two points of view. I couldn't speak. I think I tried to. I, it's hard to remember. But the man, I remember his eyes were so piercing blue, the man in the pickup truck. And I was not afraid of him, which you would think I might be after what just happened to me, but I wasn't. I knew he was, a, I knew that he was going to help me. Put me in his truck, brought me to the hospital. Even as I was wheeled into the hospital, I remember feeling myself on the gurney seeing from that point of view, but also seeing as if I was walking next to the gurney. 
And then um, there was another time years later when I was in a head-on collision, I was in an eight-car pileup and same thing, same thing happened, um, the, the two different points of view. And then again, um, I was raped again um, and that I was not present for. I was not present for that rape at all. I don't know where I went, but I was not there. I never lost consciousness as far as I know, but I was not there. I cannot recall everything that happened. Maybe I lost consciousness, but I, I don't think I did. I was told that I probably didn't. Of course, how do you know, right? So all these different times, my whole point is, now this kind of stuff can happen at a lesser degree too. Say there's a little kid and parents are fighting, 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 and they don't like all the yelling and blah, 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 all around them. So they escape. It may not be to the same degree. They may not feel themselves come out, but they escape. There are people that have clumps of memory gone, okay? And it may not rise to the level of completely separating and creating a whole new personality to come in and take over for you and then have to integrate those personalities later because then it becomes a disorder, multiple personality disorder. There can be people like me who actually, something happens, they go away. I know with the voices, there was like another me that stepped in, a stronger me. I know with the massive abuse in my house, there was a stronger me that stepped in. Although I never rose to the, I never completely separated. I never separated so that I had to integrate these personalities. They integrated on their own. However, when these soul wounds run so deep, I still have the soul wounds and you know, we have soul wounds, all of us do. Um, and we may not know what they are. The way that you learn what they are is when you're raising your vibration, they sometimes will just come to the surface, but other times is pay attention to what's going on. Cause life is circular. As I said, and these events and stuff will keep coming into your face. Do you ever feel all of a sudden like life can be going good and all of a sudden you feel unworthy or all of a sudden you feel, um, I don't know. I, I don't know. There's so many different ones. I say unworthiness because that's like mine or you feel um, ashamed or, or something, you know, these are your soul wounds coming up. So you gotta, no matter how much therapy you do mentally, no matter how much emotional work you do, we got to work on our spirit. So we do the cleanse, we cleanse our spirit, we rise our vibration, what raise our vibration. When these events come up and they come into place, we pay attention to that and we ask for discernment and we heal them each time. And then the scars can be opened, but each time it gets easier because you're aware of it, you see it, you don't let it, you don't let it take over you, right? So, but what happens when you're in these in-between spaces? And like I said, it could be something much smaller for you or much bigger for you. We all have our level where we might cut out and we might not cut out completely. Maybe you didn't cut out completely like me, but you did some kind of protective mechanism. You built that wall or you hardened your heart or whatever the case may be. Whatever that is, that right there, that separation, that point of separation, at that point, the negative entities are right there ready to latch right on. If they latch on at that point because of the trauma, they find a way, they find loopholes because there, there's like a legal um, uh, contract that they have to follow, but they find loopholes and they get you at that point. So that's why, that's another reason why it's so very, very important that we heal these wounds, that we get to the root of them because we don't want these negative entities having any kind of hold on us. They will take advantage of our trauma. They'll take advantage of our mistakes. They'll take advantage of our, you know, going down the wrong road. Or even, like I said, I mean, some of these things, it, it's, you know, I fell off my bicycle. It's not like I was doing anything wrong, but they can take advantage of that. And then they can, they can plague you with that. Okay. So it's very, very important that we get to the root of these um, soul wounds and heal them up because they will, they don't come in like most negative entities. I mean, some of them, like if you find yourself in a house that is filled with like disembodied spirits, um, 
Some of them may come in a very scary form, but most of the time they don't. Most of the time, I mean, they're the masters of deception, so they'll come in as a, a, a being of light or maybe not even a being at all. Maybe they'll come in as a thought or whatever. And, you know, we are so programmed not to see into the spirit realm, not to think um, uh, not to think of, of eternity wise, but to think of, you know, earthbound stuff. So we don't even see it. So anyway, soul wounds, very important to heal. I just want you to think about this. So I don't mean for you to go back to all the traumas of your life. I don't mean for that, especially if you haven't had any kind of therapy or anything. Don't, don't do that without somebody's help. But just know that these wounds are very real. We all deal with things in our own way, like I said, whether it be building a wall, whether it be stepping out of ourselves, whether it be creating another personality, whatever the case may be, we all do it. Our spirit needs to be healed if we're going to rise to the level that we need to rise to. If you need help with that, I do this kind of work every day. If you need help with that, please reach out. My email address is A-N-S-W-E-R-S. -S the number four, Y-O-U, one six at gmail.com. If you need to talk about it, you don't have anybody to talk to, message me. This is important stuff. I can help you heal those wounds. I don't want to, you know, I could go on to different ways to heal them and we're going to end up with a two hour video. I don't want to do that. Besides, it's a very personal thing for each person. But it's real, real important. And it can, you know, healing these wounds can remove the blocks from your life. It can change anxiety. It can change headaches. It can change physical symptoms, uh, relationship issues, all of that stuff. I'm not saying it's all connected to this. You know, sometimes we just have issues and they're not connected to this at all. But our body, mind, and spirit all work together. So if you've had physical trauma that led to emotional trauma you could, and also spiritual trauma, you can go to a therapist and heal the emotional trauma, but if you don't heal the physical trauma, you're still going to have issues. If you go to a, a medical doctor and heal the physical issues, but you don't heal the emotional issues, you're still going to have issues, right? And if you don't, same thing, you could go to the medical doctor, you could go to the psychiatrist or psychologist and work these things through and heal your body. But if your spirit is still injured, you're still going to have these blocks. So if you need help, reach out to someone, even if it's not me, reach out to someone qualified and um, find some exercises to help you through this stuff. It's real. You're not crazy. Okay. And these blocks can be really, really devastating. All right, you guys have a good night and I will see you on the next video. Thanks for subscribing. And just so you know, I'm doing, um, my friend put up a GoFundMe page for me. I haven't seen her in a while. And then she did this and I thought that was really great because there are some things going on. I will post that in the description below. Also, if you want to donate a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, whatever, help me to continue to help people. I do all kinds of stuff, um, and I have other videos that explain that. You could go to paypal.me forward slash light insights if you have PayPal. Um, if not, um, message me if you want, and uh, you can donate other ways, or um, you could go to the GoFundMe page. I really need help and I really appreciate it. Thanks for subscribing. I love my YouTube subscribers. You guys are awesome. And please share this video. I still haven't made it to 100. I'm giving away an Amazon gift card as soon as I get to 100. All right, you guys. Have a great night and I'll see you in the next video.